Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange, you doing uh, commentary here with the Media Speaks. I want to welcome you, a uh, high def there, low def, hello. Uh, if you're watching live, uh, you may want to watch uh, right where you are, as a matter of fact. If you're not, it might behoove you to move to the high def, uh, youtube.com slash The Correct Views. Friends, we have an awful story to start with here. Um, a little bit of a, a Middle Eastern ISIS update, if you will. The first story is so bad that um, the second story needed to be good news. This is probably one of the worst stories I've reported on the entire year so far. <sighs> Dailymail.uk ISIS burn woman alive for refusing to take part in extreme sex act. Reveals UN official as the Islamist fighter's sadism becomes even more depraved. Now, I put in the description for this, and I'm going to say it here, I don't know what the deep extreme sexual act was, but I do know that that is a discreet way of saying anal sex there. Um, uh, booty sex for you Usher fans. It is, again, I, I have nothing against the way people wish to have sex. I do think it's wrong that if someone doesn't want any kind of sex that you would emulate them listen to this this uh, this is where you could tell the people that that don't recognize isis as evil are truly the people that are spoke of in the bible that are just blind to evil so the woman was burned alive by depraved islamic state militants after she refused to take part in an extreme sex act a united nations official has revealed Hundreds of women have been kidnapped by jihadi fighters who send the prettiest virgins to slave markets in the Syrian city of Raqqa, where they are sold as sexual objects to the highest bidder. Many are stripped naked, it says, and forced to undergo virginity tests before being sent to the twisted auctions the UN Special Representative on Sexual Violence and Conflict has said. Now, you do know that you can lose what is called the hymen. It's a, uh, I don't want to be overly graphic here, but for those of you that don't know, it's what proves that a woman is, in fact, a virgin. But it's not foolproof. Um, or again, women aren't allowed to do anything. But if they were allowed to ride horses, it's very, uh, it's been widely reported that women riding horses can alter their hymen. But in any event, they're stripping the women and selling them as slaves. And we'll get to it in a minute. These are the people that uh, are getting arms either via, via proxy by stealing it or direct funding, and then they switch sides. A lot of, this, a lot of the barbarism here is uh, indirectly funded by Mrs. Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. We'll get to all kinds of proof on that in a minute if you doubt me. Trust me, I didn't come up with it myself. I'm just commenting on it. It says, uh, Zinab Bangura discovered the gruesome extent of crimes against young women, particularly from Iraq's Yazidi minority community, after collecting information from Sharia, Iraq, Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan. Again, uh, all the stories match up. And when you keep getting consistently the same story from everyone, then a lot of times it's a dead giveaway that the truth is, in fact, right in front of you. Um, again, going after minorities, you see it, you see it in every, in every uh, context with them. In this country, you have minorities that think that they're gone after. In some instances, they are. In some instances, they're not. But when you, when you have true barbarism, you have almost nobody at all speaking out about it. Let me ask you something. Why am I one of the only people that's doing a report on this? Is there a, is there a really good chance that you didn't even hear about this story before you clicked on my video? I'm leading with it. Why? Because if you can't recognize this as evil, then there's something wrong with you. And there has been proof that we've already covered here that the government, our government, had reasons to suspect that this kind of barbarism would happen with the rise of ISIS if they went ahead and capitulated to it, if they funded it, if they, what they wanted to do when they sent the money out, not to give you a long, boring history lesson, but you need one. When the money went out, what they did was 
make an effort to draw forces against Assad, who, let's face it, is not the world's nicest person either. But rather than staying out of it, that's not what they did. They used our weaponry against us. Now, did we fund them for the sole purpose of this happening? Some people say, yeah, I don't have proof for that, so that I'm not going to say that. But it's clear that the money that funds these people came directly from the U.S. government, in large part. And they, they betrayed us, plain and simple. And now we're dealing with this. It says, uh, ISIS commit rape, she said, sexual slavery, forced prostitution, and other acts of extreme brutality. We heard one case of a 20-year-old girl who was burned alive because she refused to perform an extreme sex act, or we learned of many other sadistic sexual acts. It says, ISIS has carried out systemic sexual crimes against Yazidi minority women and girls after kidnapping over 200 of them in their homes in northern Iraq last August. Human Rights Watch has said. Now, Michael Savage said once on his show, and Michael Savage is somebody who I listen to frequently, even though he's more socially conservative than I am. Um, he said that uh, years ago, maybe five, ten years ago, one of the reasons that we face so much grief and hatred from such large segments of the Islamic world are things uh, like the Hollywood movies and pornography, whatever, whatever, whatever. That argument, while I love Michael Savage, isn't holding a lot of water these days because these people are far worse than just about any American that you can think of, especially if you factor out those that are already in prison. I mean, we, what, they said there's anywhere between 50 and 70 serial killers loose at any one time. My God, there are thousands of these people. And this is not done because they hate the immorality of America, because what they're doing is far more immoral than just about anything says, those considered the most beautiful are sent to Islamic State's adopted capital where they are sold naked, the UN envoy now claims. Just put the woman up there naked and sell her as a slave. They were first offered to the leaders of the deprived organization, followed by the emirs, who, and finally to the soldiers. Remember the emir from the Stooges. Each buyer usually takes three or four girls and keeps them for a few months before they grow tired of them and sell them again, she told Middle East Eye. So, you know, if a woman prostitutes herself, she, she's a, you know, a jackal. She should be stoned. However, if you steal them, rape them, use them as much as a prostitute was used, you can sell them back into slavery and other ISIS members will just keep having sex with them, banging away. There's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly moral, right? But prostitution, no, terrible. Do you see... Oh, what's it called when you believe two contradictory things in your mind at the same time? ISIS is plagued by this. They're on a moral high horse, and they are the most immoral people that have ever walked the planet. These people are more vile than most, not all, most Nazis were. I mean, these people are really as bad, if not worse, than the average Nazi. Because you have to remember, a lot of the Nazi, your average Joel soldier, soldier, was too busy freezing to death in Russia to realize how horrible Hitler was. These people know full and well how vile they are and they still have thousands of followers and don't say it's because America's immoral we already covered that now didn't we she added to her story here we heard of one girl who was traded 22 times and of a Takaferi leader who had written his name on the girl's hand to show that she was in fact his property 22 times, and you can guarantee he passed her around with his friends at the same time. And again, I have nothing against people that are listening to this that would enjoy group sex. I don't think you should be raped into it or sold into it. Tens of thousands of ISIS members expect that they will get women to marry them following their recruitment. 
Yeah, I'm sure. Um, two, the, the woman that was burned alive for not doing this, the amount of bravery that woman had, she's one of the bravest people I've ever reported on. Uh, the extremists have banned the girls from using headscarves after some of them used them to hang themselves. So they can break the Sharia headscarf rule. But nobody else can break the Sharia headscarf rule. Well, they're doing it so that their raped brides don't commit suicide. Well, what if, what if you have a different reason for not having them wear a headscarf? If ISIS people can break the Sharia law headscarf, then for their own reasons, why can't everyone else? Just say it. It's their own rules. They're the Sharia lovers, not me. It says, um, the city of Raqqa, where the girls are supposedly being taken and violated, was adopted by the Islamic State as its capital city. Yeah, that, real good. I mean, that's why I have such little sympathy for these boneheads that join them. If you join ISIS, a 16 runaway bride, well, then you get what you get. I mean, know how to read a newspaper. ISIS has released several gruesome images and videos from the city which show armed militants parading the streets, public executions, and extremists, all-female brigade, which enforces its strict interpretation of Sharia law. So they have a female brigade. How, how dainty. But yet, America's crazy, they say, for having women in the army. And yet, what's this? An all-female brigade. They are... They are no better. That's not like they're on this great moral high horse here. Are you seeing it all fall apart as I give you the facts? Not all kidnapped girls are taken to the heart of the Islamic's brutal regime, though. In early April, more than 200 Yazidi women, children, and the elderly were released near Kirkuk after being taken hostage last June. Yeah, I bet they got their house back, too. How very kind of them. It says aid workers reported that among them was a pregnant nine year old girl. A pregnant nine year old girl who suffered horrific sexual abuse at the hands of ISIS militants in northern Iraq. She claimed to have been sexually abused by no fewer than ten men. A nine-year-old girl was passed around like a gangbang object in a porn. And you mean to tell me that I'm the only person that cared enough to report on this? It's absolutely freaking mind-blowing. It says, hundreds of women and girls were also abducted by ISIS last year after the militants seized the Iraqi city of Sinjar, which is mainly populated by the Yazidi people. Another Yazidi girl who was snatched from her family near Mosul described how ISIS stormed her town and took girls as young as 10 to become sex slaves. Oh, what they're, 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 the, the nation of Islam. It, 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 Islam, is, it's the religion of peace. The religion of peace is, as in put the pieces of your life back together when we're done raping your nine-year-old. 19-year-old Hannah told CNN she was regularly beaten and taken to a warehouse where hundreds of women were lined up and handpicked by the extremists. There she met a fellow Yazidi girl who she helped, who was held hostage, handcuffed and raped by ISIS fighters. And uh, of course, they said once they finally do get taken out from this lifestyle, they need uh, to be treated for unimaginable trauma. They will never be okay again. Never, ever be okay again. Um, again, I promised you some good news after that horrific story. Uh, again, every time you think ISIS, remember, passed around the nine-year-old girl and burnt a woman alive for not wanting to have uh, sex. That's ISIS. Um, the New American, Texas Senate passes anti-Sharia law bill. Um, I've, all, I've since heard, uh, since I've been trying to get this show ready, that there is some trouble now in getting it finalized. Uh, somebody comment me out on this. This is the, the 26th, so it's uh, now the 28th, and they're haggling with this. This There's nothing to haggle with here. This is one of the best pieces of news maybe I've given all year. On Thursday night, May 21st, the Texas State Senate passed a bill, there's a link for it, that would prevent any international law from becoming used in Texas civil courts to decide disputes. Radio station WOAI characterized the bill as an anti-Sharia bill. For those of you that don't know, Sharia law is where if you cut something off, if you steal an apple, you get your hand cut off. If you have marriage outside of wedlock, they might kill you. Um, women can't drive cars. Women must wear headscarves. That BS is Sharia law. They want to bring that into our country. It says Senator Donna Campbell said that her bill doesn't mention Sharia law. 
just that it guarantees that no law from foreign courts, take that UN, would be used to override American law in settling civil matters. And again, um, sustainable development is all about trying to get you to live in a one-room apartment. So the UN already has other ideas in your civil um, obedience training, and uh, this would prevent much of that too. Um, when pressed for clarification about just which, it says just which such laws she was concerned about, nice sentence, and she could provide an example she whiffed, no foreign laws specifically, this just provides a context for judicial discretion that we don't trump Texas law, American law, with a foreign law regarding family law. So whether Campbell knew it or not, her bill, if signed into Texas law by Governor Greg Abbott, who if he doesn't should never get a vote from anyone in the state again, would make Texas the next in the line of nine other states that have enacted similar statutes. That would be Tennessee, Louisiana, Arizona, Kansas, Oklahoma, North Carolina, Washington, Alabama, and Florida. This is wonderful news. Keep Sharia law the hell out of our country. And it goes on here to mention multiple times that it's been tried to been brought in since 1996. Um, they found a woman filming a bridge in traditional Islamic garb, so they got a search warrant um, and found, and this was back in the 96, they found that she had all kinds of uh, Pakistani court orders and various things in her custody which talked about this sort of thing, about how to incorporate Sharia law into the country. And uh, thankfully, it doesn't look like our leaders, at least in some states, are going to let that happen, and that is something that I praise. Good job. Um, IBTimes.com, International Business Times. Clinton Foundation donors got weapons deals from Hillary Clinton's State Department. Yep. Before I get into this, let me, let me explain to you what the, what's happening here. You have nations like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia uh, confirmed whether uh, 911 was an inside job or not. Confirmed most of the attackers were, in fact, Saudi. Whether or not they were paid for by the government or not. Uh, how much money could the government give you to kill 3,000 people in the skyscraper? Probably could never pay you enough. So don't tell me they paid for it. it. The point is, these men were vile enough to do it. Um, they routinely execute women for driving, um, like I mentioned earlier, adultery. This is a, a kingdom that is as evil as anyone. Mao Zedong, you name it, it is that kind of evil. That's who Hillary Clinton is getting, getting money from so that she can go ahead later and pass things that are in their interests and they're oftentimes used against us or are sold in the underground in that regime and given to people like ISIS. Even by the standards of arms deals between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, it says this one was enormous. A consortium of American defense contractors led by Boeing would deliver $29 billion worth of advanced fighter jets to the United States oil-rich ally in the Middle East. We already know where that goes, don't we? Israeli officials were agitated. Now, I don't blame them. Reportedly complaining to the Obama administration, there's links for all of this at the IB Times, that this substantial enhancement of Saudi air power risked disrupting the region's fragile balance of power. The deal appeared to collide with the State Department's documented concerns about the repressive policies of the Saudi royal family. Uh, it doesn't matter to her. Which, what matters to her is getting that money so she can uh, further destroy the nation like her husband did. It says, now in late 2011, and that's when this was being talked about, Hillary Clinton's State Department was formally cleared for clearing the sale, asserting that it was in the national interest. At a press conference in Washington to announce the department's approval, an assistant secretary of state, Andrew Shapiro, declared that the deal had been a top priority for Clinton personally. Of course! Shapiro, a longtime aide to Clinton since her Senate days, added that the Air Force, the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Army had excellent relationships with Saudi Arabia. Well, you know what? That's because we allow them to blow us up and we don't do anything to them. And again, this, this Clinton family, I can't even believe they're walking the streets free. 
they get around laws through the Clinton Foundation, as we're reporting on now. Uh, they they want to go ahead and give Mrs. Clinton money, but they can't, so they'll pay Mr. Bill Clinton $500,000 to speak for a half hour, knowing full well where that's going to go. Guess what? It's perfectly legal. That's the kind of evil, vile things that this family does. It says, these were not likely relationships bridging leaders of the two nations. In the years before Hillary Clinton became the Secretary of Hate, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia contributed at least $10 million to the Clinton Foundation, a, philothro- yeah, oh yeah, a philanthropic enterprise, yeah, I'm sure, that she has overseen with her husband, former President Bill Clinton. Just two months before the deal was finalized, Boeing the defense contractor that manufactures one of the fighter jets that the Saudis were especially keen to acquire, the F-15, contributed $900,000 to the Clinton Foundation. Well, isn't that interesting? And then later on, when she became Secretary of State, they got all those planes. Well, that's just a coincidence. Let's vote this hag into office. She's not corrupt enough. The Saudi deal was one of dozens of arms sales approved by Mrs. Clinton's State Department that placed weapons in the hands of governments that had also donated money to the Clinton family empire, an International Business Times investigation has found. Under Clinton's leadership, the State Department approved, get this, 165 with B billion, a B, worth of commercial arms sales to 20 nations whose governments have given to the Clinton Foundation. Aw, that, well, that's just a coincidence. That figure, derived from three full fiscal years of Clinton's term as Secretary of State, that would be October 2010, September 2012, represented nearly double the value of American arms sale made to those countries approved during Bush. And yet, oh, Bush, Bush was terrible, Bush was terrible, Clinton's so great, Clinton's so great, Obama's so great. Well, look what they did. Are they so great? What would they do that was so great? They, they trumped what you didn't like about Bush. The Clinton-led State Department also authorized $151 billion to separate of separate Pentagon broker deals for 16 of the countries that donated to the Clinton Foundation. Are you seeing where this is going yet? Donating to the most evil people in our times just giving money back and forth to each other to, to further destroy the nation. It, it's mind-blowing. And that she could be within a breath of the, of the White House. Listen to this. Under presidential policy derivatives signed by President Clinton in 95, which obviously meant nothing, the State Department is supposed to specifically take human rights records into account when deciding whether to approve licenses enabling foreign governments to purchase military equipment. Does that sound like Mrs. Clinton is doing that? Does it sound like any Clinton has done that at all? No, it doesn't. And that's why she's getting sued on racketeering charges, because that's the kind of person she is. Friends, much of this is brought to you by Sticker Junkie. And I've still got four stories to get to, but I want to let you know, Sticker Junkie, they made these. You want some passing time stickers? That's the band I'm in. They're a buck apiece. The correct view is at Hotmail.com. Friends, You'll get stickers that look like that by going to StickerJunkie.com. Uh, when, when you order, make sure you uh, let Dave uh, send an email. David Lake heard about it from the correct views. You're going to get an amazing deal on it, and you're going to get the best stickers you've ever seen. You don't have to be the best artist. Just give him some idea what you want, and David Lake at Sticker Junkie will swing and kaboom, knock it right out of the park. Guys, I want to get on to two stories dealing with the food before I get to the dumdies of the day, and these are extremely important. Very, very important. Uh, it's brought to you by um, Mike McLaughlin, one of the best fictional writers and poets and political ranters around today. Mike McLaughlin, M A C L A U G H L I N. Four ingredients in 80% of processed foods that are decimating immunity, causing cancer and many other diseases. You know, I haven't eaten in like two days because I'm just not in the mood for anything that comes in a box. I'm like the, the fast food king, I really am. But at some point you get sick of it. And again, that's why I'm always riling, or railing against GMOs and all of that is because I actually like fast food and the fact that they're poisoning us uh, angers me greatly. Well, 
there are four things here that if you just limit them, if you if not at all cut them out, will greatly help you. It says it's not just the high fat, salt, or sugar content of processed foods that is driving obesity and diet-related illnesses. The lack of food diversity is killing our gut flora, claims one researcher. If we exclude sugar, approximately 80% of all calories in processed food come from a combination of just four ingredients. Drawing upon evidence of multiple studies, professor of genetic epidemiology at King's College, Lon good old London, and author of The Diet Myth, Tim Spector, said that the restrictive nature of highly processed diets, which we must, which are, use just a few ingredients, is responsible for our microbe diversity and is making us ill. You tuned into the correct views because I'm going to make that make sense to you. You need to eat many, many different kinds of food because you have many kinds of good bacteria in your stomach that is responsible for the health of your entire body, including to a large degree the mind. We are pretty much only eating four food groups processed different ways and put into a lot of different foods. So you think you're eating a lot of different foods, but you're really only eating four, and it's destroying your health. It says, the fact that junk food is bad for you is not news. The combination of saturated fat, which they're now not sure is so bad for you, calories makes you fat, sugar gives you cancer, chemicals likewise, and lack of fiber is an obvious signal. The lack of diversity in the diet, though, is an overlooked factor. 80% of processed food is made up of four ingredients, corn, wheat, soy, and meat. Were it true that these four foods were health-promoting, whole wheat bread munching, soy milk guzzling, cheese nibbling, and corn chip having populations would probably be experiencing exemplary health among the world's nation. Well, why is America doing so sick? It says to the contrary, despite the massive amount of calories ingested from these purported health foods, we are perhaps the most malnourished and sickest people on the planet today. Um, my... Uh, Christelle is 26 and she talks like she has the body of a 90 year old woman um, we went to 9 inch nails she stood for the mosh pit I moshed in the mosh pit her legs were sore mine were not I'm 42 um, I eat horrible I really do but I take vitamins and I, I'll tell you one thing I don't do um, I'll take a few hits now and again but I don't smoke cigarettes and I think that's a huge one and I've seen studies where if you mix the chemicals that are in cigarettes with the chemicals that are active in these processed foods you can bring yourself all kinds of terrible things it says the average american adult is on 12 prescribed medications and that's obviously how diseased we are and maybe brainwashed too it says in comparison 15,000 years ago our ancestors regularly ingested around 150 ingredients in a week in the manner of filmmaker Morgan Spurlock's Super Size Me experiment, you all remember that, if not look up Super Size Me, uh, Spectre's son volunteered to follow a junk food diet for 10 days. Stool samples were taken before and after the diet. In addition to feeling lethargic and sick, the samples showed that his son's microbial gut richness has been decimated with a loss of 40% of his detectable species just three days later. How could all of this be? Again, lethargic and sick. That's like the way Christelle feels every time she does something. And it's, it's the food. I'm trying so hard to get people to listen to me. It's the food. That's why you're lethargic. That's why you're sick. That's why I'm talking into a microphone. How can this be? Doesn't the US Food and Drug Administration, USDA, excuse me, food pyramid emphasize whole greens like wheat above all other food categories? It says a lot of this has to do with Monsanto and the things that they are putting in the food. And it says, are, are probiotics the answer? Um, listen to this, because I do take probiotics largely for this reason. Spectre said that personalized probiotics should be the solution. Either they are personalized yogurts, could include four to five strains together, or they contain one that we know would suit the rest of your gut microbes. To do that to everyone would need to be tested for their gut microbes and put into groups. The yes and no. You might not get optimal help here, but I promise you, if you take, um, if you take on a regular basis probiotics, 
it's going to it's going to reverse a lot of this but again you've got to quit eating so much of it it says processed foods are part of our modern culture so companies can help consumers by reducing the energy density fewer calories per 100 grams including vegetables fruits or whole grains where possible and boosting the fiber content if you're having trouble uh with bowel movements, well, I'm not going to get into that, but try getting some fiber. Try getting rid of the damn processed foods for a little while. And again, I'm the wrong person to be giving this speech, but at the same time, I see people do so much worse. I mean, I might eat some fast food. I see people, and God, I love her. Christelle will buy these, it's fake chicken, something that once resembled a brownie, genetically modified corn, and BPA written plastic. She will nuke it and eat it on a regular basis. And I just cringe. That's not even food. You'd be better off not eating anything at all. Uh, how many of you like fast food? Do you? Well, I got wonderful news. Every time I give you crap news today, I've given you great news afterwards. And listen to this. Natural food victory pizza hut. Taco Bell to eliminate artificial ingredients major restaurant chains address cancer linked food additives this is not just good news this is great news this is as good as news as uh, no sharia law in texas kind of good news only this helps the whole nation alan salazar infowars pizza hut and taco bell two of the people that have made me as fat as i am they have announced that they'll be removing artificial additives from their products, a move seen as a response to consumer advocacy and growing awareness of cancer-causing ingredients. I like to think I played a part in this, albeit a small one. Thank God. On Tuesday, Taco Bell said that it will try the novel concept of using real pepper as opposed to black pepper flavoring in its beef and revealed plans to eliminate trans fats in the food by the year's end. And notably, the company will also rid their nacho cheese uh, of yellow dyeing number six, which is great because Christelle drinks it. It's an ingredient shown to cause cancer in lab animals and will remove blue number one from its avocado ranch dressing as well as caramine from its tortilla chips. Caramine's another, carmine's another one, I should say. C-A-R-M-I-N-E. Yellow six caused adrenal tumors in the animals. Remember that if you buy something that it's in. Yellow six causes adrenal tumors in animals. And uh, again, the FDA is saying uh, more studies need to be done. I don't know. We're talking about cancer. How many more studies do you need? It either caused cancer or it didn't. Blue one was not found to be as toxic in the key rat and mouse studies, adding, but an unpublished study suggests a possibility that blue one caused kidney tumors. Well, guys, do you want to wire or put up your schlong? Because that's what they do if your kidneys shut down. So maybe you should remember to get blue one out of your diet as much as you can. It says Pizza Hut will implement changes to its ingredients even sooner, saying that it will get rid of artificial colors and preservatives by August. Both restaurants are part of the Yum! Brands fast food company, which also owns KFC, though the fried chicken purveyor has not announced that it will implement similar measures. So good. When this happens, in August, start eating Pizza Hut. Uh, at the beginning of the year, start eating Taco Bell and see how quick KFC jumps in line. Um, it says Chick-fil-A, Subway, and Panera Bread have all recently implemented ingredient changes. And Chipotle is, uh, I, I think they're either all organic. It says here genetic, they have no genetically modified ingredients in their products. I'm not sure if that means they're organic, but I think it does. So there you go, friends. Some very, very good news. And I know you hung on because you were waiting. You know what time it is. That's right. Time for the dumdies of the day. Did I say dumdies as in more than one dumdie? Yes, I did. Guys, I'm uh, dumps cap of the month is going to be uh, is going to be sent out. For those of you that are going to call me out in case uh, it would ever find out that I haven't yet set last month dunce cap. It's made. You've all seen it. I've been going and interviewing like Judas Priest and stuff. You can find it on my personal channel, Sam DeGangie, um, YouTube. 
I haven't had a chance to get all my ducks in a row here, but I'll be mailing out that dunce cap this Friday. And I'm on record for saying Friday. And um, I got dumdies coming out the rear end. So I'm going to go ahead and give you two of them here. These are stories of idiots, but not big enough idiots to win, of course, the much revered dunce cap of the month. It's brought to you by Change Taxi if you're within a 50 mile radius of Canton, Ohio, and you're going to use Uber. If you're going to use some other tax com or taxi company, make sure you price match it with Change Transportation, which you can find on Facebook. DEA takes $16,000 from train passenger because it can. Listen to this. Any cash is inherently suspicious and can be deemed guilty by a seizing agency with no corroborating evidence. We now have not guilty people, but guilty money. Listen to this idiot. There were no drugs and nothing to enforce. But that didn't stop the DEA enforcement agency from taking 16 grand from a passenger on a train headed to California. After scraping together enough money to produce a music video in Hollywood, 22-year-old Joseph Rivers set out last month on a train trip from Michigan to Los Angeles, hoping that it was the start of something big. Rivers changed trains at the Amtrak station in Albuquerque, New Mexico on April 17th, with bags containing his clothes, other possessions, and an envelope filled with $16,000 in cash that he had raised with the help of his family. Perfectly legal, right? A little bit of gumption, a little bit of support from your family, a little bit of talent. The Albuquerque Journal reported this, that agents with the Drug Enforcement Administration got on, uh, got on after him and began looking for people who might be trafficking drugs. Rivers said the agents questioned passengers at random, asking for their destination and reason for travel, which is, again, against the Fourth Amendment. You have a right to be secure in your person. You do not have to answer any questions regarding this. When one of the agents got to Rivers, who was the only black person in the car, according to witnesses, the agent took the interrogation further, asking to search his bags. Rivers complied, which he shouldn't have. The agent found the cash still in a bank envelope and decided to seize it on suspicion that it may be tied to narcotics. Rivers pleaded with the agents, explaining the situation to 